Do you find yourself diving headfirst into a new diet or exercise program only to fizzle out a few weeks thereafter, right? Four fast forward, two weeks, two months, and you're back exactly where you started. You really start strong and then it just, some life happens or it becomes too hard to maintain and your goals of achieving better health, weight loss, toning, or whatever your initial goal was when you started seems so out of reach. If you can relate to this, I really want you to stay tuned for today's episode. I'm going to share a strategy with you that'll help you develop lasting, healthy habits so you can ditch the all-in or all-out approach for good and you can finally get the results that you really desire. And if you're wondering ever since you turned 40 how the woman looking back at you in the mirror is actually you and if you're continuing to google how to lose weight in your 40s and get completely overwhelmed with all the recommendations that pop up, I want you to know that you're not alone. I've been there and I know it's confusing, but after 10 years of working with clients, helping them to transform their bodies and their health after 40, I'm ready to help you too. If you want a step-by-step guide for looking and feeling like yourself again with personal recommendations for what exercises to do, what foods you should be eating, and what stressors you should be avoiding, I want you to book a free call with me. It's a limited time complimentary call where we'll spend 30 minutes together creating a roadmap designed for you so you can start building healthy habits for a better you. The link and all the information is in the show notes. I cannot wait to chat with you. Do you feel unrecognizable since hitting your 40s? Is losing those stubborn five to 10 pounds despite your best efforts a constant struggle? Are you always tired, bloated, and relying on caffeine or sugar to get you through the 3 p.m. slump? In this podcast, you're going to find practical tools to shed weight, regain your energy, and feel like yourself again as you navigate your 40s and beyond. Hi, I'm Lara, a registered holistic nutritionist and life coach with over 10 years of experience helping women achieve their health and weight loss goals. Get ready to learn how your hormones and metabolism are shifting and be equipped with simple nutrition, exercise, and stress management tools so you can navigate peri and postmenopause with confidence and vitality. Now go grab your infused water because it's time to dive in. On today's episode, I'm going to share with you my favorite approach to making changes to your health that last. (laughs) I'll start by sharing what it is, why it's important, and why it works, and then I'll dive into some actionable steps you can start to take today, okay? So stay tuned till the end where I'm going to give you what you can start doing today to see amazing results in two weeks, two months and two years from today. Before I get into the what, why, and how, let me share a little story about myself. So I had this on and off again relationship with exercise. I might have mentioned this before, but eating healthy has come pretty naturally to me. But sticking to an exercise routine was a completely different story. I would start strong, going full force five days a week, and then suddenly nothing. It was incredibly disappointing and over time I made no progress towards my goal of being strong and lean and I felt totally stuck. So I found myself one day standing in front of my mirror and feeling really frustrated with my lack of progress. And that day I decided that I was going to take a different approach. Instead of trying to overhaul my entire routine all at once, I began making small changes. I committed to just 10 minutes of exercise each day, whether it was a brisk walk or a quick workout at home. And this small goal felt manageable, achievable, and it really gave me a sense of accomplishment every day. As I continued with this approach, something really amazing happened. I started to look forward to my daily exercise. I began to feel stronger, I felt more energized, and the scale finally started to move in the right direction. Those small tweaks, you know, taking the stairs instead of the elevator, focusing on just 10 minutes of intentional movement every day, 
really began to add up over time and I started to build habits that felt sustainable and really enjoyable. And now when I'm I'm in a place that my body loves movement, I love to exercise. I'm almost addicted to it. And I exercise daily, not because I have to, but because it's just become such a vital part of my routine and my well-being. And this journey really taught me that lasting change does not happen overnight. It's really about making consistent, small adjustments that gradually transform your habits and ultimately your health. So on this today's podcast, I'm going to dive deeper into how you can apply this strategy to building healthy, lasting habits. And we'll end up talking about practical steps you can start to um, start today to set goals make small changes, and really stay consistent over time. And this consistency is what will lead you to transformation. And it'll take you away from this start and stop that most of us do with, whether it's our nutrition or our exercise or any healthy habit that we're trying to develop. So if you haven't gathered already, what I'm talking about here is instead of overhauling everything all at once, choose to make one tiny change to your health, nutrition, your daily rhythm routine, one at a time, and make it as small as it possibly can be. And over time, you just accumulate on this tiny habit shift that you've made. So we'll get more into strategy in a little bit, but let me start talking about why tiny shifts work. The short answer is that tiny changes over the long term lead to lasting habit shifts. And when we're able to make something a lifelong habit, it leads to results, right? So I often talk about like who cares if you lost 30 pounds in 30 days? If you cannot maintain that 30 pound weight loss, and if you cannot maintain the way that you lost that weight, it doesn't matter that you lost that weight because who cares if you lost the weight, you're not going to be able to maintain it. So we're all about maintainability, sustainability, and the long-term longevity of the health and weight loss that you're trying to achieve. So when you make small changes, they are sustainable. And what happens is, I talk about rewiring the brain a lot. When you make small changes and it accumulates over time and you're practicing this tiny shift over time, what you're doing is you're setting new pathways in the brain that you practice over and over and over. And so me showing up for 10 minutes of movement started to create this pathway in my brain that was one, achievable, so there wasn't a lot of resistance. I could move 10 minutes a day, it was no problem. It was very different from setting aside an hour and a half, five days a week. That was a real stretch for me to go from zero to this you know, hefty movement. And we think that's what we need in order to see results when actually it's the 10 minutes accumulated over time and it's the habit and mindset shift that we really need. So by moving 10 minutes a day, it became a habit. One, it was really easy to do. So this new pathway was developing in my brain that I was practicing over and over. Two, it was extremely rewarding for me to show up for myself daily for 10 minutes. There was not a lot of resistance. Three, it was really rewarding. It was really rewarding for me to actually show up for myself. And because there was very little resistance in my brain, there was, it was enjoyable, right? So whenever, I've talked about this before, our brain likes us to move away from pain and towards pleasure. So this 10 minutes of movement was very pleasurable versus my hour and a half of grueling exercise was not very pleasurable for the brain. So my brain started to associate positive emotions with the movement instead of negative emotions with what I was experiencing before. 
And this is true for our diet. You know, I talk a lot to many people, right, about diet. And they go, uh, let's say a lot of people talk about keto. It's still a thing. And it's not sustainable. Why? Because our body likes carbohydrates. And we're continuously telling our brain it cannot have carbohydrates. Our body cannot have carbohydrates. Like it's this whole thing of restriction. You can't have carbohydrates. can't have carbohydrates. You could do that for a period of time. But after a while, you have a carbohydrate and then your body rebels. And your mind rebels because it's, it's such a pleasurable thing to eat a carbohydrate. And so you revert back to your old patterns because there's so much resistance. There's such difficulty in this way of eating for your lifetime. So these are these are the reasons. And a lot of this is backed up with science, right? Research indicates that habit-based weight loss interventions incorporating small habit changes over the lifetime leads to greater weight loss in the long term. So short term, the results might be slower, but long term, the people who integrate small habit change over a longer period of time leads to greater weight loss, greater health, and it's simply more sustainable in the long run. So that's why it works. Now let's put this into action. How do you put this into action? So I'm gonna give you a three-step approach. So my first recommendation is to choose your biggest bang for buck. So everyone's might look a little bit different. So maybe for you, it's to focus on your sleep. It has nothing, it might not initially have anything to do with eating. Eating could be your next step, but it could be that you're staying up till 2 a.m. in the morning and this is leading to insulin resistance, it's leading to cortisol issues, it's leading to leptin resistance. These are all things that I've talked about on previous podcast episodes. So for you, it might be best to focus on your sleep and to set a target of sleeping by, let's say, 11 p.m. If you're now sleeping at 2 a.m., that might not be reasonable, so you start to scale back slowly. For some others, it might be simply to put coffee after breakfast. Maybe you are into intermittent fasting and you're just having a coffee and skipping breakfast. Well, if you listen to my podcast episodes, previous ones, you might think to yourself, well, you know, maybe I need to try something different. Maybe this is leading to crashes of energy in the afternoon. And perhaps you choose to just focus on eating a good balanced breakfast, listening to these podcast episodes and gleaning from them, and maybe just moving coffee to after breakfast. So whatever it is, you choose one habit at a time. Now, it doesn't have to be just one habit. I like to choose one, let's say, nutritional habit, one movement, and one lifestyle at a time. And I find that is sustainable and that's kind of how I approach my program is move you through step by step and really work with where, you know, biggest bang for buck for you and, um, and, and start with one small change in that's going, that's going to reap you the greatest amount of results. Okay. So the greatest return for effort. So that's my first tip. Choose the thing or things that are going to work best for you. The second tip would be to track it. So first track consistency and you know have a chart and if you work with me I give you all the tools. Track, track it. Maybe check in with someone and create accountability with someone. Tell someone that you're actually doing this and track that You know, I, for, you know, this week, I'm going to start making sure that I have coffee after breakfast and I'm going to move 10 minutes a day and this is the movement that I'm going to do. And track it for the week and then check in with someone at the end of the week. And finally, don't aim for perfection, but aim for consistency. 
We often think consistency is perfection, but I have a golden rule and I've talked about this in the past. Just simply don't miss two in a row. So be honest with yourself, right guys, don't make excuses. Um, If you're willing to show up and follow through on things for other people, do the same for yourself, but at the same time have grace. So if you simply couldn't, there was something going on, morning was hectic, and you just had that coffee in the morning, give yourself grace, but promise yourself that tomorrow you're definitely going to go back. You're going to revert back to this commitment that you made to yourself. So after, at the end of the week, when you see this one blip or two blips possibly, you say, it's okay. I followed the no to not missing two in a row and I'm good and you don't feel guilt and you don't you know beat yourself up because I've talked about this in another episode where you just need to be gracious with yourself because you're trying to develop healthy healthy emotions surrounding the new habit that you're trying to develop so that would be my third tip Don't miss two in a row and try not to break the chain and maintain consistency. So my conclusion, you guys, is slow and steady truly wins the race. Try not to do it all and burn out. And if you can't see yourself doing something for your lifetime, it's probably not the best thing for you. And choose a starting point. So choose one thing at a time, one in nutrition, one in movement, one in lifestyle, and try to do it with consistency and set a reasonable goal. So my movement goal was 10 minutes a day, and that's all I did. And that made the world of a difference. And and it really did because now I, I love working out and it's just part of my day and I definitely do more than 10 minutes of movement today. But that was the place that I started and I highly encourage you to adopt this kind of attitude towards your health, towards your eating, and um, you will absolutely reap the results in the long run. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, I would love it if you would leave me a podcast review, especially on Apple Podcasts. It's truly the number one way that you can thank me for showing up and giving you this information and giving you these resources. Thank you for listening. Join me each Wednesday and Friday for a fresh episode of the Mastery Metabolism Over 40 podcast. And if you're looking for additional resources to help you navigate this peri and postmenopausal journey, Head to nutritionherway.com for free recipes, resources, and a supportive community of women going through this journey just like you. And if you found this episode helpful, others will too. I would love, love, love it if you can leave a podcast review. It's truly the number one way you can thank me and it grows this show, getting this podcast in front of other women just like you who want to learn how to navigate this peri and postmenopausal journey. Signing off in love and health.